strange market scenario. I think this market is suffering from bipolar personality. We go from one extreme to another. The market was indicating in the beginning higher interest rates at a faster pace. That was about a week ago. And that indicated expansion, inflation in the market. And we went from that scenario to what the market was wishing for, lower interest rates at a lower pace, which indicates a slowdown. So we went from one extreme of inflation to another extreme of some sort of a slowdown, but it was according to the wishes of the people in the marketplace. It's never inflationary, nor too much of a slowdown. It's somewhere in between. What I did want to speak to you guys is about something interesting that I read over the weekend, and that is the subscription model. Companies that were able to engineer a move towards a subscription model, so their multiples expand. Let's take two examples. Let's take Microsoft and Apple. You have a company like Microsoft that operates on a subscription model, and that has to do mostly with their Azure, the storage service model, and Office 365. Just because they were able to shift their focus from selling a product to selling a monthly subscription service, their multiple expanded to 23 times. For every dollar they make, the market gives them $23 valuation. As opposed to Apple, that is still slower to move into their subscription model. And the main reason is that Wall Street loves to know that regardless of what product you sell and what the success of the product is, you collect money in advance. In fact, nowadays you have subscription models almost to everything you can think of. You have a subscription model to software, to TV services, to food, to clothes. So the world is absolutely transitioning to a subscription model. In fact, there is one company that already did that, and that's Adobe Systems. When they actually launched their Photoshop on a subscription model back in 2011, not that many investors gave them any credit for that, but the reality is 90% of their business is a subscription model based. You pay $10 to $50 per month and their multiple expanded to north of 30 times from about 10 and the stock went up almost 800%. So just imagine what happens when you are able to shift to a subscription model where you are actually able to charge in advance and you don't live or die on a single product. Netflix, in spite of them selling at 60 times earnings, were able to do that and the reason people are willing to give them 66 times earnings, most likely, is because regardless of the success of any of their programming content, you keep paying for the subscription. So it's good for everybody. If you look at the FANG stocks, with the exception of Facebook, I think most of them are oversold. Because the bottom line is their, their free cash flow is still there, their price earning ratios keep dropping. The other thing that's happened is the tax cuts, which I think the market is reading that as a negative, but actually the free cash flow remains very high. As far as Apple goes, uh, I'm a strong believer that they have nothing but good news in their in their future. You look at what their buybacks are, 70, 80 billion dollars a year over the next few years. Their free cash flow is going north. They're at 60 billion. I think in five years, they'll be double that. And if you look at their subscription services at 37 billion, at 24% increase, that means that it's gonna double in three years, which will surpass all records in terms of the number of phones that they sold in terms of the revenues that they generated because of that. All right, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Altria, a big tobacco company, and they own Marlboro, Parliament, Benson & Hedges. They have about 55% of the U.S. market share. And last week, they jumped into the cannabis space, investing $1.8 billion into a Canadian company, Kronos. Obviously, Big Tobacco is facing declining revenues year over year right now. They jumped into the vaping space a couple of years ago, and there's been a lot of federal pressure. They develop the products in these um, fruity flavors. So it's been very appealing to the young teens and the federal government has been clamping down and asking them what they're, what these companies are gonna do. Altria has pulled those products off of, off of sales without actually having to, but they pulled that product. So they're out there looking for what else is out there. And obviously the cannabis market is, is something for them to get into. There is a big difference between an institutional investor in one of these cannabis companies slash big Fortune 500 companies that are putting money to work in the cannabis market as opposed to the individual investor. The big companies have a different agenda in mind. So I just wanted to uh, expand a little bit on the uh, yield curve that typically it is the two year to the 10 year that gets uh, watched most notably. I had 
uh, read an article over the weekend regarding the uh, three-year exceeding the five. It indicated that it's actually happened seven times since 1965. One of those times we were already in a recession. That was in 1973. The other six times the uh, three-year exceeding the five did precede a recession. The lag between the inversion and the recession was 25 months. That would put us to the end of at least 2019, as if not well into 2020, uh, before recession would hit. And the S&P, during that average 25 month span was up over 20%. The yield curve is flattened between the, the two and the 10, so something we should ought to watch. Historically, markets peak six months before the recession starts. The big question is when the recession is going to hit. That is a very, very difficult task to try and predict. Everybody, and thank you again for watching our videos. I'm Amit Stavinsky, the Managing Director of Tamar Securities and its affiliates, 911 Financial Services and Firefighters United. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or check us out at our website, tamarsecurities.com. You can also call us directly to our main offices in Woodland Hills at 818-914-7461. The highlight of the week is that financial markets tend to move from one extreme to another. It is a struggle between too much growth to a slowdown. Please remember, it's never really one thing or the other. It's somewhere in between.